everyone. Welcome into the show. We are here to talk baseball and baseball cards. I am Alex with Greg Morris Cards, and today I am here with the 1974 NL Rookie Pitcher of the Year. He pitched for six different teams over 10 seasons, including the Giants, Cardinals, Padres, Expos, Angels, and Athletics, both as a starter and reliever. He is also a published author and a rather gifted artist. Hopefully we can talk about that. John Diaquisto. Hey, John, how are you? Hey, Alex, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing very good. I think interested in your, uh, in your art and, and the, all the things you're doing these days. Hopefully we can talk about that. Is that, is that keeping you busy these days? Oh, uh, every day. I, I draw every, every day to keep sane, as we would say. Uh, right. You know, it, it's very relaxing for me. I've been doing it since uh, 1996 in a serious format. And uh, I started off with number two pencil and, and then advanced on to charcoal and then advanced on to watercolor and then uh, in, into acrylics and oils. And then also I do uh, uh, digital art also. So it's realism. It, they call it realism. So, uh yeah, it's come a long way. Uh, uh, it's the popularity of it is is grasping, and and you know it's really funny to be known more as an artist than as a ball player. It's it's kind of staggering. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I know some of your art, a, a lot of your art seems to be uh, baseball focused. I mean, it's 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 players, it's scenes, right? I mean, that's what that's what I've seen. Yeah, well, that's I've been doing that, but I also do other things like. Uh, old world scenes, uh, okay. uh, you know, f- farmhouses, uh, landscapes, uh, ocean scenes, uh, actually anything, anything that, you know, floats my boat the day that I'm looking at it, you know, I'll, I'll tackle it. And, uh, uh, it's been, uh, it's, it's been quite interesting ride, uh, coming from uh, baseball into being a baseball artist or a sports artist. I, I've done it, uh, you know, football pitchers and, uh, you know, baseball, basketball, done pretty much everything. And yeah. uh, it's catching on. So that's very cool. Now. So you grew up in California. Um, yes. And, but how did baseball enter your life as a young kid? Like, was it something that you just, watched and, and thought it was was interesting or did you just start playing it right away or how, how did baseball enter your life well uh in you know in the 60s we we had in san diego we had the san diego padres triple a team uh which was it it started in lane field in actually the 40s 30s and 40s and uh then uh lane field was torn down and then the Padres moved to Westgate Park in, in Mission Valley in San Diego. So as a kid, my dad used to take me to the games because he was working for Anthony's Fish Grottos, and he got to meet a lot of the players when they would come and eat and have have uh, you know meals at the restaurant. Uh-huh. So he was always getting tickets, and he would take me to the game because I was – the one that really showed a lot of interest in, in baseball. Plus I was doing really good in little league. And uh, so that's how I got hooked up on it. And primarily because my brother was involved in it first. And so I was the bat boy of the team. My brother was five years older than me. So I, I started to get to like baseball because I saw he was enjoying it. And that, that's how it started for me. And then also I had a transistor radio with an earbud and uh, I'd listen to the Dodger games. I could get the Dodger games uh, uh, on my transistor radio in San Diego. So I was a big Dodger fan when I was a kid. Uh, I loved Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale and and Duke Snyder. And then Duke Duke and I became good friends later on when I played for the Expos and even prior to that. And the funny thing was Duke, Duke Snyder told me, he says, you know, I used to watch you play football. I used to come to watch you play football. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, that's very interesting that you would say that. He says, no, I'm, I'm serious about it. You, he goes, you were a better football player than you were a baseball <laughs> player. I said, okay, thanks. That's good to know. Okay. <laughs> Well, you're a pretty good baseball player. I mean, winning, winning, you know, NL, NL rookie pitcher of the year, 74, 
uh, I mean, only one person wins that. So what, what was what was sort of behind the breakout uh, of that season and what, what went so well for you that year? Well, my fastball, obviously. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was uh, over 100 miles an hour, and uh, I had a really good slider also. And uh, my control was actually pretty good in, in 74. And, you know, I just uh, – I was a battler. Uh, I, I wanted to pitch the whole game and I was a type of pitcher that, you know, wouldn't give in to, you know, being taken out of a game, uh, no matter what the score was. And I think that that aggressiveness and tenacity kind of took its, took its course and allowed me to, to go out and win, win 12 games that year. But I had like 10, 10, no decisions also. And, you know, it was like, how is all of this, you know, coming together with 10 no decisions? We won every one of those no decisions. So, right. so I was like almost a 20 game winner, you know, but I wasn't. Right, uh, right. But, you know, it was being involved in the game, keeping my team close all year long. And which what the important factors were that really gave me the stability for my career to carry on from there, from that point and to overcome the injury that I had the following year with the sophomore jinx, as everyone else would know it as, uh, you know, it, it just, it gave me a lot of, a lot of good direction in 74 to go from there. Yeah. Over 200 innings, 167 strikeouts. Yeah. Like you said, 30, 36 games started and only 26 decisions. Uh, but I mean, in five complete games, like you said, you didn't want to come out of the game. So, um, that's- yeah, I, I didn't like to. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> I, I used to tell the managers, get off my mound. Go yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. We talked to uh, a few weeks ago, we talked to Vita Blue, a uh, pitcher for the A's and the Giants. Yes. And uh, very similar yeah. mindset. I guess that was kind of a mindset for pitchers in the in the 70s there. Like, just, I, I'm not going to. It really was. Yeah, and it was set that way out because of guys like Bob Gibson and Koufax, you know, when when they would go out and pitch, you know, and it was the mindset, you were out there to, to pitch nine innings. And, you know, when I was in the minors, I pitched a 16 inning game <laughs> and the following start, I pitched a 14 inning game. Wow. So, you know, you look, you look at that and you, you just shake your head and you go, wow, mm. you know, how, how the heck did that happen? But it did. And, you know, that was the mindset that we had. You you start the game, you finish the mm-hmm. game. And today's game, it's a, it's a lot different. You know, it's a, you get – they go seven innings of shutout ball, quality start. And I just shake my head and go, yeah, you guys don't even know what a quality start is. Yeah. You know. But the game's changed. I've changed. I work in MLB. And uh, I've seen the changes from my career – in the, in the seventies all the way to the present time. And I've been involved in every one of those changes and, mm. you know, it's sometimes it's hard to stomach, but you know, I, I go along with it because, you know, my career is over. These kids like to play the way they're playing yeah. now. So, you know, it's, it's, it's their call, not mine. That's, a, that's an interesting mindset. That that's, that's really good to hear from, from a former, uh, from a former player who uh, maybe, obviously played a very different era and very different game, but, but recognizes that, Hey, the game's changed. And uh, that's, yeah, exactly. that, that's, that's unique. Exactly. I think. Um, now you mentioned the nickname fastball, John, how, how did that, I mean, obviously the, the name speaks for itself. I mean, and you had a very, very, yeah, high block. It, it, it came later in life. My, my actual nickname when I played was Johnny D because no one could pronounce my last name. So they just called me Johnny D. Rick Wise called me D. Okay. You know, it was like, you know, okay, well, let's take it really short now, <laughs> you know. And I just talked to I, I talked to Rick about three weeks ago, and, uh, you know, he's he's doing really well. And we were laughing about that. And I, but, you know, the fastball John came up because when I wrote the book, I was trying to find – you know, a title for the book. And basically I, I couldn't come up with, you know, three strikes you're out, you know, was one, but they already had written a book about mm-hmm. that. And, you know, so I said, well, how about fastball John? And bam, it hit. 
And now everyone calls me Fastball John because I wrote the book. And the book is still popular. It's still selling. And, you know, it still gets five-star reviews. And, you know, it's it's very interesting. You know, I'm not a superstar or anything like that. But, you know, it's like someone had to write a story about a journeyman, you know, and I was a journeyman. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I bounced around. I, I had long, long stays in, in San Diego and in San Francisco. But, you know, I bounced around on other teams because they needed a gunfighter. That's what they needed. Right. And a guy, a guy to come in and get a strikeout or a guy to come in and relief and, and, and hold, hold the team from scoring. And that's what I was used as. And plus, I could start. So they had the option of using me on both sides. And that actually gave me more longevity in my career than I really expected. I should have only lasted maybe about, you know, seven, seven years, six years. But, you know, I got 10 full seasons in and, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, I had a, I had a good career doing that job. It was it was interesting. You, the, see, a lot of kids don't understand the aspect when you get to the big leagues, you take what they give you. You accept that position. You don't want to tell them, well, I'd rather start, you know, or I'd rather be a reliever. You, you can't really do that, right. you know. They bring you up for a specific spot on the team. You take that spot, work your way into it as you become a better pitcher. You can work your way into it and then, you know, perform in, in the duties later on that they give you. But, you know, during that time, you know, you can't really choose uh, choose what you want to do. You know, you it's kind of given to you. Right, right, right. I, so you – you pitched for 10 years and you, you, you played on a lot. It's as, as you mentioned, several different teams, you know, by right. doing that, you, you had the opportunity to play with a lot of different, uh, a, a lot of really impressive of, of names. I've got a list here of just some players that you played with yeah. Ozzie Smith, yeah. Dave Winfield, Gary Matthews, Gaylord Perry, Raleigh fingers, Dave Kingman, even Bobby Mercer. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't know if any of these guys were, were guys you were close with or anything, but, were there were there some some players you played with that you just kind kind of walked away thinking like wow that that player is something special? Well, when I first went to my first big league spring training, I lockered next to Willie Mays, and oh okay, that, <laughs> that was shocking. That was shocking. I was I was nineteen, and I remember walking into the clubhouse and Mike Murphy, the clubhouse attendant, he. Uh, he was a manager, assistant manager for Eddie, Eddie Logan. And uh, he took me to my locker. He says, those two lockers are yours on the far corner. All the rest of these lockers belong to Mr. Mays over there. I said, oh, okay. And there he was sitting right there, you know. And so Mike brought me up to, to Willie. This is a funny story. And he goes, uh Hey, hey, Willie, this is a John D'Aquisto. He's our number one draft pick. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's going to be lockering down there and, and, uh, just wanted to introduce you. And I said, hi, Mr. Mays. Now he's no, 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 no. You're, you're now, you're now a giant. You're now my teammate. You call me Willie. And oh, I said, wow. yes, sir. I said, yes, sir. Mr. Mays. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, Oh, I got to see, we got to break you in from that, break you out of that habit. See, he says, so do you play golf? And I said, yeah, I play golf. He says, well, here's some golf balls. And I said, oh, Titleist, my favorite. I opened them up and they had Willie Mays on the ball. Like, I'm really going to play with these, right? Sure. Yeah. Wow. That is, that's awesome. Willie, Willie Mays custom, custom golf balls. Yeah, I know. That's very cool. And, you know, it was, it's really funny. It's, it's really funny because he really stuck out in my head because we were 20 years in age difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Willie was like, uh, he was in his forties. You know, he was actually 39 at the time when I, when I was in spring training and, and I was 19. So every year that I, I have a birthday, I know where Willie's going to be. He's 90 years old. I'm 70. So mm -hmm. we're always 20 years apart. Right. But, you know, it, when I wrote the book, Mike Murphy came to me when I was in San Francisco doing my book, book signing. He came up to me and says, I need two books. I need one for me and one for Willie. I said, which which Willie? 
Willie McCovey or Willie Mays? He goes, <laughs> Willie Mays, sign your book for Willie Mays. Wow. And I went, whoa, that's a switch. <laughs> you know, and that really kind of stunned me right there that, wow, this is interesting. And, you know, I, I've always had the highest regard and respect for Willie Mays as, as a friend. Mm. And uh, he kind of took me under his wing, you know, when I walked in, you know, he, he really took care of me. You know, and I really, I really appreciate that. He, he acted like a dad to me. He always scolded me when I did something wrong or, you know, but he always praised me when I did something right, you know, and I, I respected him for that. That's, that's an amazing story. And I, I think uh, speaks uh, a lot for Willie Mays, but, but also of yourself because of uh, obviously he recognized that, that you were a guy that, that deserved that sort of uh, mentorship because not you know a lot of guys come to the league and think like you mentioned a lot of guys come to the league and just think well I'm gonna I, I'm a star and I'm gonna I'm gonna make my own way I can do my own yeah, thing exactly. but exactly yeah, yeah. That, that's really interesting yeah you um, have to nail on the head with that exactly. so yeah so um, I wanted to look at some cards I know we had talked about this uh, and if you know if we're gonna look at if we're gonna look at cards we've got to start with your rookie card and so okay uh, this would be your rookie card from 1974. Um, and it's one of those multi-panel rookies. So you're on there, uh, Dick Bainey, uh, Bob Apodaca, and Mike Wallace, along with yourself. Um, yep. it, did, did you did you have any experience with any of these guys? Probably not, right? Uh, Apodaca, I did. Uh, okay. I pitched against I pitched against Bob. Uh, I was basically a Met killer in '74. I was like six and two against him. So you oh, know, wow. I. I I really had uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, games with with the Mets, but uh, Bob Bob's you know the only guy. And Dick Bainey, when I I pitched against the Reds a lot too, uh, so when Bainey was with the Reds, you know I saw him, mm -hmm. you know he in in relief, but that was about it. Uh, Wallace, I pitched against Wallace when he was with the Phillies, and you know, uh, Mike Mike was a, a great reliever. He came out, you know, and did his job, and you know, and it, yeah, so yeah, I had interaction with uh, all three. Yeah. Now, do you do you remember where that uh, picture was taken uh, of yourself? Or actually, uh, I think it was taken in. When I showed up, most of the pitchers were taken in Chicago, if I recall. Yeah. Uh, they were always, you know, always catching us when we came out of the dugout. They would always take headshots or mm -hmm. you'd, you'd always see in the background, you would see Wrigley Field. Or you would see in New York, you would have, you know, most of the card pitchers, we had our road unis on. So you, very seldom you would see a home uni you know, on, on, hmm. on any of the West coast teams because they caught us when we'd go back East. Yeah. So you see Shea stadium in the background, or if you played in the American league, you would see Yankee stadium or, right. you know, or if you went to Chicago, you would see the white Sox, you know, at Kaminsky park or Wrigley field. Right. So you start looking at the cards, you'll see those backgrounds and you'll also notice that the road unis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talked to uh Wes Parker, uh, um, first baseman for the Dodgers for many years, yeah, I know Wes, yeah. and he was saying that uh, that all the yeah they always took their car the pictures at Shea Stadium because he was with the Dodgers and uh, also Tops happened to be located pretty close by so I think that was that's <laughs> correct again kind of yes, you got it yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so let's move let's move to the next year so 1975 this is a this is a nice picture here um. And uh, classic 1975 look. That's one of the most popular sets from the 70s with the 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 flashy colors there. You got the the brown and the orange there for the Giants. But uh, yep. um, was this a spring training shot, or is that where is that taken? That one is at Candlestick. You can tell in the background the seats and the astroturf. And so a lot of the players that came out, you know, during during that time. Uh, they would catch a seed. This is prior to uh, prior to batting practice, because see the collar I had on on ah. the 
the, it, it's a sweat, it's a sweat jacket. Mm-hmm. So we would wear those cause it was so cold up there. You know, we would wear the, wear those jackets, but that was, that was a, in 75. That was the picture. That was the one I sent you. That was supposed to be the one where I made the rookie uh, all-star team with Frank Tanana. He was American league all-star rookie and I was the national league all-star rookie. So I had two awards that year and that was supposed to have the gold trophy on it. That's the one I sent you. Oh, okay. That that card that I sent to you was a gold trophy card that should have been put up. Okay. So yeah, that was that candlestick. Oh, I see. I see. Yes. I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I guess I just got a different version of it. So, um, uh, yeah. but, but the 75 is a, is a popular card and it's a pop, very popular set. Um, the one after that's the 76. Um, yes. You can see that one. Yes, I do. Yep. Okay. 1976. That is in spring training. I can tell you that right now. First of all, it's a, it's a home uniform mm-hmm. as you can see. And uh, also, you can see it's wide open. Uh, you don't see any background on it, and which tells tells me that it was definitely in spring training. And also, my glove is looking very new. Yeah, <laughs> the other way I could tell it was early in the Fresh season. Out of the box, yeah, right. New, yeah. Very new glove. Yeah. Um, exactly. Did you go through a lot of gloves, at, or did you were you just a one glove kind of kind of guy throughout the most of the season? I had a glove contract with Wilson, which okay. you're, you're looking at the A two thousand A, which is completely covered, and I liked it because it gave you a little extra padding. And my catchers like to play burnout with me because I was hurting their hands so much they tried to hurt mine, you know, by throwing the ball back hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. But I liked it. If eventually, after <coughs> after Wilson Wilson had stopped making the kangaroo shoe, then I went to Adidas, and then from that point on, I pretty much severed my ties with with uh, Wilson in the glove contract side, and also because they did make shoes. So I, I wanted to get both. And I, I went to Mizuno later on in my career, uh, which was a very good product. You know, great gloves, okay. great gloves. All right. So 76, that's, that's 76 tops. And then we have uh, 77. Now this is your only Cardinals card, I believe. Now you weren't with the Cardinals. Uh, this, is an interesting, this is an interesting card. Okay. This is Tell candlestick, it. candlestick park in the background. You can see the fence. Okay. You can also see the AstroTurf on, on the field. The number 34, I was not number 34 with the Cardinals. I was number 43. This is a hand-painted airbrush card. Okay. All right. Okay. It does look that way. It does look that way. Yeah. And so they, they did a pretty good job of it, you know. <laughs> but, but uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, also, you know, I, I, I can tell because I'm on, I'm on the uh, – the right field side, which is actually the home mound of the, of the Giants. It's, it's not the Cardinal side. Cardinals was in the left field side. So you would see a totally different background. So this was airbrushed. It's very rare uh, because they didn't have a chance to get a picture of me. They just used that was going to be the action shot that they were going to use if I was still on the Giants for the following year. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So when- when were you traded uh, to the to the Cardinals? Is that seventy seven? Seventy seven okay. in the winter. In, 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 the, in the winter. winter. Okay. Yeah. So I went to spring training with with the Cardinals that year in seventy seven. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I pretty pretty soon after that you were with the Padres, right? I mean you weren't you weren't in St. Louis. Right before. after that, yeah. yeah. Right uh, around May, I believe, I got traded to San Diego, and uh, it was really. Uh, a breath of fresh air being able to go to San Diego. I, I, I imagine, oh, yeah. as you mentioned earlier, getting to watch the Padres uh, growing up and now going there. Oh yeah, exactly. And you know, there's not many of us that got to play, uh, play in our hometown. Uh, Joe Musgrove is doing that right now. Mm, but yeah. uh, Greg Nettles uh, played for San Diego. 
and I played for for San Diego, and you know, it, it was like it was so cool, you know, to play four years in San Diego and and have all your family and friends be able to be there for you, you know, and 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 watch and watch, you know, you have a good year, good years actually. I had uh, you know three pretty good years, solid years. Uh, I was used primarily as a starter, spot starter, and a reliever. And mm-hmm. 78 was probably my best year. And uh, when I when I pitched, which, you know, was the following card. But, uh, you know, it was like going out there almost every day, every other day, you know, for 45, 50 starts, I mean, 50 appearances, uh, 51 in 80. Uh, you know, that's over 150 games in, you know, three, in, in three years, that's, that's a lot of pitching, a lot of of work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in a, in a bullpen, you know, Raleigh fingers closing it out. Yeah. I had 10 saves and I had 10 saves and mine weren't one inning saves. They were all three and four innings. So back then (laughs) you had to pitch at least three innings to get a save. Yeah. (laughs) So, So it was very interesting to be able to go out, you know, and accomplish that. And I was a hundred percent. And I, I remember, you know, they wanted to give me Raleigh's job and Raleigh got really upset about it because, Mm. you know, they had him there and, uh, but he was not having a good year in 79. So they, Mm -hmm. they gave me the job the first couple of times out and I ended up giving up a home run on the first pitch to John Tamargo in San Francisco and Raleigh got his job back. Oh, and wow. then I went back to doing my job and continued <laughs> cause they wanted me to be a starter. So because Rick Wise got hurt. So when Rick Wise got hurt, I went back to starting. I won nine games that year, you know, as mm-hmm. a spot starter. So yeah. that was pretty pretty impressive that that is yeah i mean yeah it, it's it's sort of uh it it goes with your earlier statement about you you kind of go where they tell you to right they you you yeah, go exactly. yeah, kinda... you know, you, beggars can't be choosy as we say you know <laughs> right uh, right exactly yeah. Very you know, cool. i almost got sent to double a when in uh spring training of 78 this is an interesting story uh alvin dark was the manager and in spring training, I was pitching. I was pitching really well because I went to Mexico and, and pitched in Mexico. I was 9-0 and in Mexico and I and struck out 127 people. When I came to spring training, I was ready to go. Mm. I mean, I went right from Mexico right into spring training. I was already in shape. Well, Alvin was telling my brother he ran into my brother at the airport and he told him, I'm going to send your brother to double a, he needs, he needs a character, character rebuilding. And my brother goes, I don't know if you, you've been watching what I've been watching, but uh, he was nine and oh in Mexico. I, I think he's got enough character built right there. So all that was going on. I'm in spring training and Gaylord goes, I don't know, John, it looks like you're going to get sent down. Well, Alvin, Alvin got fired. We were going to Tucson. Alvin gets fired. Roger Craig takes over, mm. who was my pitching coach. Charlie Estrada, Chuck Estrada, he he becomes now the pitching coach. So I got two guys in my favor. Uh-huh. I'm sitting in Tucson with the team, and, and no one's talking to me, nobody. And all of a sudden, Roger and, and Chuck call me over with Bob Fontaine, and this is where they're cutting guys. And I'm sitting there, I go over there and they say, well, Roger goes, well, you know, my first day is manager and I hate to do this to you, but uh, we're going to keep you on the club. And I went, oh my God. I said, you guys are bad. You guys are bad. Oh, and by the way, you're pitching today. <laughs> said, oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's even better. Okay. Not, not a lot of, not a lot of uh, forewarning. I guess you didn't know several days ahead of time when you were going to pitch. Oh, it was like minutes, yeah. <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a couple more I want to show you. And I, this is sort of towards the tail end of your career. Uh, I, I believe you had some arm issues towards the end, right? It kind yeah, of. I did. In yeah. 75, I had arm, arm issues. And okay. at the end of my career, I had uh, some bone chips that had to be cleaned up, but not the major. Mm-hmm. The major injury I had was in 1975 
where I had Tommy John. Oh, okay. Okay, I was the second one to have Tommy John. Brent Strom and I argue about this all the time. He says he was the second one. I said I was the second one, so I don't know who was who. But anyway, it, we were either second or third. <laughs> so, right, okay. But, yeah. um, so you have two more. Uh, the only two cards I have to show are just two other teams that you played for. This is your 82 tops, and that was with your brief stint with the Angels. Uh, yes. I don't think you were there very long. Spring uh, training, Palm Springs. You see the background. See the mountains in the background? Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it look, looks really nice. And then uh, the last one is uh, what I think is your final card, 83 Fleer. I think there's an 83 Tops the as well. Fleer. Yep. For the yep, that's the Fleer. Yep. Interesting card. When I first got called over to Oakland, I hadn't signed yet. I was not a signed player when that pitcher was taken. I hadn't signed wow. a contract. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. Okay. So the, the guy gets me. I walk out of I walk out of the dugout. He snaps a pitcher. And I said, Well, I'm not, I'm not I haven't signed yet. He goes, It's okay. I'm I'm taking a pitcher. He <laughs> he takes a pitcher. I go down to see Art Fowler. I throw. Art says, go see Billy in, in the office. And and I said, Okay. So the deal with Art and Billy was if Art sent me to Billy, Art approved me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I threw pretty good and Art approved me and Billy then signed me. I signed my contract. They picked up my whole contract. So they picked up a lot of money and uh, I, I stayed with Oakland. And then when Billy left, I, I, I was, I was along with Billy when Billy left. So uh. yeah. So okay. they didn't want me around. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was that was Billy Martin's last year in Oakland. This the, the same yeah. your your year. Okay, yeah, eighty two, and then then I went over to the, I went over to the White Sox, but now I played in Denver, you know, and then mm -hmm. uh, they were going to bring me up at the end of the year, and uh, uh, that never came to fruition. So, yeah, uh, really interesting information. A lot of great stories there. I I just wanted to ask you one final thing uh, before sure. we. Before we conclude here, um, yep. what was so? Was there a singular moment in your career that you just will remember forever? I, I, it might be the Billy Mays one. I mean, that, for me, that would be amazing. But yeah, what, but, what would be the, the the singular moment that like you will always remember this one moment of your career, and and you'll you'll never forget it. It was just such a powerful moment for you. Well. I would say when I broke the rookie strikeout record in San Francisco, uh, it was against the Cardinals. How ironic, you know, it was against the, uh, the Cardinals. Uh, I remember everyone was standing up and applauding and I'm going, what's going on? I turned around at the scoreboard and it says that I just broke the rookie strikeout record that was established in 1906 by Christy Matheson. Wow. And I went, Oh, Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it's like, oh, and I got a picture of, of me looking around like, you know, what's going on, you know, and, and and getting a standing ovation for that really, really touched me. I mean, it, you know, right. they get the accolades from the fans and uh, I really love San Francisco. They're, they're really good to me, you know, and especially after I got hurt. You know, they really stuck with me. And, you know, I, I was really saddened to leave San mm -hmm. Francisco. But, you know, I know baseball's baseball. It's a business. And, you know, you got to move on. But right. uh, I'm still very close with the SF uh, fan fan base. And, you know, which is really uh, makes me very, very happy. That's great. Um, so tell everyone the name of your book and, and where they can get it. And, and if they want to purchase sure. one of your art pieces, where would they do that? Okay. Uh, the book is called Fastball John. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it at Barnes and Noble. And pretty much any bookstore can get it for you, wherever, wherever even the small independent bookstores can get it. Uh, it uh, there's two. There's a coffee table size, which is a hardback, hard cup, hardcover. And then there's the paperback. So okay. I recommend getting the 
coffee table size, they're both pretty much the same price. So, you know, the coffee table one is really cool, you know, because it's about nine, nine and a half inches. It's about, <laughs> about like this, you mm-hmm. know, but it's, uh, it's really nice. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good presentation, good cover. Uh, my artwork, you can find that on artwork by John Diaquisto.com. Uh, you can also find it on Facebook, uh, artwork by John D on Facebook. Uh, if you just type in my name, you'll, it, it'll just pop up. The artwork will pop up and also fastball John will also, but yeah, it's, uh, it's available. Amazon does a good job, you know? Yeah. And we'll, we'll include links, uh, in the description of this video to, to, to those places so people can check it out there as well. Um, John, thank you so much for joining. This has been uh, great. I, I, these stories that you've told have been amazing. And uh, I really have had the uh, the great honor of, of sharing this time with you and, and going over your cards and talking about your career, which has been, as you said, a really, uh, a, a really great exemplar of a journeyman uh, in baseball. And I think that's, that's a fantastic story. Well, thanks, Alex. I, I appreciate it. And, you know, you did a great job. And, Uh, I enjoy sharing the stories uh, for people to enjoy. All right. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you.